<laughs> Cheers. Right. Um, and we've got uh, Harry Stronach for the um, Akaroa Ratepayers and Residents Association. Hello again. Hello. Welcome. Something they delete. Well, I'm here to talk about cruise ships, surprisingly. I understand you've had the opportunity to read the submission we made on the subject. Yep. So I'm just going to say a few words around that submission. Over the last six months, the last six month season, there were 92 ship visits, 59 days with over 2,000 people, 2,000 passengers landed, over 198,000 passengers in total. And on the current schedule, there's going to be similar activity in this next season. Akaro Township, you know, 650 permanent residents. Infrastructure to match 650 permanent residents. The ratio of cruise ship passengers to, to, to local residents over the summer season is 300 to 1. So how do the locals feel? Some of them in tourist businesses are doing quite well. They feel quite good about it. Some of them in tourist businesses don't like it because it's scaring away their normal business. A lot of them feel overwhelmed. They feel assaulted by the onslaught. The ships cause problems in the harbour. They cause environmental degradation. They stir up huge amounts of sediment. We're not talking a small matter here. Some ships exceed the permitted disturbance of sediment by a factor of 100. It is a clear and indisputable breach of the Resource Management Act and of the Coastal Plan. Is it a c Should your agency, Christchurch New Zealand, be encouraging ship operators when they know that they are acting illegally? Isn't the case that the law is just inconvenient and we don't really need to comply with them? Tourists have been coming to Akaroa for over a hundred years, you know, it's a tourist town, there is no problem with that. But once you've got a thousand or two thousand passengers landed in town, you don't actually need the next thousand and the next thousand after that. They just add congestion, they degrade the experience for everybody, they destroy the character of the town. The main street of Akaroa, Rue Laveau, it's not wide enough for normal two-way traffic you have to weave around the parked cars. On some days, there's over 40 large tourist buses trying to use that as a highway. Look at the planning for the next Christmas New Year period. Over that time, over that time slot of a couple of weeks, normally the town is full anyway. There's domestic tourists, the people that own holiday houses are in residence. The town is normally humming anyway. What schedule for this coming year is additional 27,000 passengers landed off cruise ships over that period. So what does that say? It says, <coughs> sorry, somewhere in this building there might be a department like a door that says sensible planning department. Well if there is a sensible planning department there's nobody at home, there's nobody running it. Or maybe there is somebody in charge and they are saying it's good for the Canterbury region, growth at any cost, Akaroa will just have to put up with it. Perhaps they would say that there actually is a plan. It's only for one more year, then all the ships will go to Littleton. Well, some of the ships will go to Littleton, we all know that. A lot of them are only going to go to Littleton if they're made to go to Littleton. They can be made to go to Littleton by effective cost mechanisms, by regulation if need be, in a worst case scenario, by making them unwelcome in Akaroa. We're not saying we want to get rid of all cruise ships by any means. We just want sensible controls on what's happening. I've had discussions with representatives from the major ship operators. They talk about sustainable tourism, they talk about community involvement, partnerships. It's talk, that's what it is, because there's no action that follows it up. It's no secret that they are profit-driven organisations. They are multi-billion dollar global organisations masterminded by unknown people in foreign countries. They do nicely out of the New Zealand trade, they do nicely out of Akaroa, 
They pay no tax in this country, they ignore New Zealand law, and they return nothing to local communities. I don't think we need to have any sympathy for them. I also think they should be made to pay a realistic amount for the damage being caused and for the privilege of being permitted to come into Rakaroa Harbour. We don't accept that the situation cannot be better managed. We want to see some leadership and some responsible planning. We are not seeing that at the moment. We want to see an end to Akaroa being used as a tourist delivery depot, with no acknowledgement of the problems and no return to the community. We conducted an opinion survey in the December-January period. You might have seen the results. It makes pretty sad reading about the relationship between the council and the Akaroa community. The final question was, do people believe that the performance of Christchurch City Council with respect to our area has been acceptable over the last 12 months? 75% <coughs> of people disagree with that statement. The common feeling among Akaroa citizens is that the township has been neglected and they've been made to pay a heavy price for hosting the cruise ships. There has been little thanks and the profits have disappeared to the out-of-town operators to the global cruise ship industry and into the central city. So what can be done? You need to recognise the issue. <coughs> you need to provide recognition of the contribution that Akira has made in keeping Canterbury cruise tourism industry alive over the last eight years. My suggestion is you should do, you should do what the cruise industry should have been doing. You should fund directly the Akira Health Hub. That would take the heat out of the issue. I want you to engage in serious and constructive planning for how the situation is going to be managed in future years. And I don't mean having that led by your tourism arm in Christchurch, New Zealand. My view is that they are clearly compromised by their promote tourism agenda. I think the people of Bakaroa can do their own town planning and we want you to accept that and to engage constructively. I've given you some suggestions how to put in place a sensible charging regime for the Akaroa Wharf. I think we should move to a levy on cruise ship passengers as they do in Stewart Island, similar to the tourism levy that will no doubt be in place in Queenstown. And this would be for the funding of peninsula infrastructure. I know council staff will say it's too difficult, they will say there's legal issues, we can't do this, we can't do that. I think it's a question of political will and I think we will find a way to do it. We need to start on that process. A couple of closing remarks. What we are currently seeing is not sustainable tourism. It's a slow motion disaster for Akaroa. Akaroa used to be a more interesting and sophisticated town. It used to have real charm and atmosphere. It used to have galleries and artisans and, and interesting shops and so on. Now we advertise those things but we don't actually have them. The population of Akaroa is only half of 1% of Christchurch City. And maybe some of you think that it's more trouble than it's worth, I don't know. Akaroa is fundamentally different to the central city. It's not just another suburb. The special qualities of Akaroa need to be recognised and embraced and preserved, and that will end up being a benefit and in the interests of everybody. So. The question is which side of the story do you want to be on? Does Christchurch City Council want to be on the side of more growth is always good or one size fits all? Or does it actually care about the well-being of small local communities? Thank you. Thank you. Um, do, are there any questions? Okay. Yep, sorry, right. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, in terms of the the charges for the ships, um, you talk about the the rate declining as the size of the ship goes up in terms of per person. Where you'd actually, from what you're saying, a better idea would be to reverse that and actually make it more yes, expensive. Yes, yes, it would. The reason that the reason that the bigger ships get a discount is because nobody, when they put those rates in place, I suspect nobody thought there would be ships with more than two thousand passengers. Yeah. But there are there's some ships at three and a half thousand. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, I mean, the reality is once Littleton opens, 
we should be able to take the pressure off Acura. The, the question is, that, but that, but just to interrupt yeah, for a moment, yeah. that's in the short term. Yes, I don't. I'm sure yeah. that will happen. With increased growth in the in the tourism industry yeah. in general, though, we could easily be back to the same situation we're in now in Acura in four or five years' time, unless we put in place controls to manage the situation. Yeah, no, I agree. So I guess my question is, do you, do you think that locals would support, let's say, a more aggressive pricing to have smaller ships? coming in which would suit Akura better and basically phase out the bigger ones by just pricing them out? Yes, that would be part of a strategy. Yeah. Right. Okay, thanks. Bjarni. Thank you. Um, in page 52 of our submission where you talk about the sediment disturbance and you note that ECAN's agreed that they're operating in breach of the RMA and the coastal plan. Yeah. Have, have you... Have people reported that to ECAN and had an enforcement action? I mean, I'm just trying to understand how ECAN, ECAN can ECAN agree to ECAN hadn't allow read that part of the coastal plan until I brought it up last year. That's my interpretation of it. Right. They hadn't appreciated that it was actually a breach of the plan. But in your submission, you're saying that they agree that it is? Yes. And is that based on a complaint? And then they've come back to you and said, actually, we've looked at it. We agree they're in breach. There have been a number of discussions on this subject. Right. Their lawyers have tried to sort of find a way around saying that they're not in breach. Um, we may have to, I'm, I'm sure the legal ground that we're on, privately the ECAM people are as well, we may have to test that in court. Right. So it just strikes me as extraordinary that these companies can just operate without any regard for the environment. <laughs> I think ECAM are under a lot of pressure on a number of fronts. Well, I mean, maybe we can put it on our joint forum with them to just yeah. get some uh, feedback I mean, on it. But you know, when, I, when I read yeah. that, and you said, you know, it has been agreed by ECAN um, and the ship operators that the ships are operating in breach of the Resource Management Act and the Coastal Plan, I'm, that was kind of like, really? <laughs> but it sounds like it's not so clear cut. Well, I, I, can you, I can send you. Is there a, a dispute? I can send you a separate submission on that on that particular point. Yeah, but it, I mean, I mean, if if it is, then it will be a breach of their plan, won't it? It will be the yes. Yeah, so it's a breach. It's a breach of their their coastal plan, and yeah. therefore a breach of the Resource Management Act. But we we also have the capacity to lay a complaint if that's the case. So maybe that's. Matt, we'll, we'll take some advice on that. So if you can send some additional material, that would be very helpful. Yep. Thank you. Does it apply to Littleton Harbour when they start going there? And I think no. It's going to be no. no, no, no. Because Littleton Harbour and Timaru Harbour are designated as operational ports, yeah. and therefore different different criteria apply. Akaro is not designated an operational port. No, it's so not. It, the normal so. coastal plan applies. Okay. It's been made by default an operational port, because of the earthquake situation and the cruise ships like going there and so forth. Uh, but nobody has caught up with that with the legislation or thought about the implications. Mm. So where does the power sit to alter the situation? Is it us as owners of the wharf or is it... Well, well you, you can't stop the ships coming into the harbour. No. 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 So that's with ECAN? Yes. But we could stop them berthing? The coastal plan is going to be reviewed. They, they don't berth, they, they run a... And then, yep. Yeah. <coughs> you could stop them using the wharf if you chose to. You could control access across the wharf if you wanted to. And there's control various ways you could access. do that. I don't think we could prohibit them from bringing passengers in. I, I uh, think no, no yes, 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 you could, you, is my yeah. interpretation of it. Yeah, okay. the yeah, we have a we have a wonderful, warm, loving relationship with ECAN, so we'll put it on the agenda for our next joint forum, well, which happens to be on the seventh of June, and I know this because it's my birthday. Excellent. <laughs> there is a there is a new Can't animal think called of a better the better way to spend it. There is a new animal called the Cruise Action Group, which is a, a, a consortium of Christchurch City Council, Christchurch New Zealand, and ECAN, who sit around the table and talk about all the stuff they should have been talking about six years ago. I sort of view the results out as sort of garnish, you know, the sort of yeah. adding the little frilly bits here and there. Yeah. And it's not really but, addressing well, the Well, Crusher didn't exist back six years ago, so it, it, it was CCT, which was separate from. 
So we've merged it, you know, a number of entities in order to create Christchurch NZ. Yep. But I, I totally agree that they should be working in a collaborative way with the community um, and not in a way that is disadvantaged or disadvantageous yep. to that. So, um, do we have do we have Simon Taylor here? I'm just no, I didn't think so. All right, well you you've just got yourself an extra minute for what was the question? Who picks up the levies and anything for the ships and the passengers? Okay. Yeah. Over the next season, the levy that Christchurch City Council will pick up is set, amounts to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for access across the wharf. You charge about ten thousand dollars for a large ship, sort of thing. Um, Maritime New Zealand pick up some a couple of thousand dollars, um, and ECAN pick up the small amount as well, which they use on navigation aids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, no, it, 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 yeah. Thank you. Look, thank you very much, and and do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.